May I ask the congregation to stand. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You may remain standing as best as possible while I extend a sincere welcome to you all as we prepare for the program. I think it is quite in place for me to apologize on behalf of those responsible for the late start and to thank everybody for being here at this time. It may not be on time, but it is this time. Is that okay? And so on behalf of the members of the bereaved family, I want to express sincere condolences from my immediate family and certainly from the church family. I ask at this time to turn to your program and we will sing the opening hymn, Precious Memories.
bow your heads with me as we pray. Gracious, loving Father, who art in heaven, we are indeed thankful that you have given us the opportunity to come together as family members and friends to celebrate the life of a son, your son, Cecil Carr. We are thankful, Lord, for the privilege to be reminded that death is real, but also to be further consoled that those who rest in you will also rise in you. And while uh, Cecil cannot hear our voice, today we speak to those who are still alive with the understanding that this is a path that we all must go. And as you comfort them, Heavenly Father, irrespectively, individually, as a group, as family members, as you do for them which no other family member can do, and remind them of your love and mercy, we pray, Lord, that you will also, through the same Holy Spirit, Remind them that this is a path that we all must go and we ought to make our calling on election sure. Thanks for today and for giving them hope in the earth made new. This we pray of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone. We are cognizant of the fact that we are gathered here this afternoon to pay our last respect to the deceased, Cecil Carr, affectionately known as Pinter. I would like on behalf of Pastor, although he has already given his condolences, but I'm now extending it from the church. Pastor A. George McCullum, the Board of Officers, the congregation, to extend our sincere condolences to the bereaved family. We all know that it is not easy to say goodbye to someone who means so much to us, but we do know that we have that blessed assurance that if someone dies in Christ, we have that hope that we will see that person or that individual again in the earth made new. So, my beloved, as you mourn your loss, I admonish you to place your hope in the man Christ Jesus. And we hope that we who are alive will remain faithful to the sure resurrection. I just like to give you a bit of housekeeping for those of you who are new to this area or this church. To the back, there's a bathroom. So should anyone need the restroom? You can just go to the back. You can either walk that way or that way, and you will see the restroom right there. I'm just going to ask that if you have your phones on, you can kindly turn it, or put it on silent, or turn it off so that the service will not be disturbed. I'm kindly asking you to do that. And for those of us maybe on the outside, as you await uh, the procedure of the service, I'll ask that you remain calm and quiet and behave in an orderly way as we go through this portion of the service. Thanks very much. Now I invite you to turn to your programs and I'm going to ask Carol Robley to come and do the first lesson, 
which will take is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading verses 50 to 58, followed by a poem by Emily Bunton Carr, grand great granddaughter, and then the second lesson, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, by Winsome Wellington. We'll go in that order, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 to 58. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed. In a moment... In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immor immor immorality, Immortality, then, sh then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is, your, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the Lord. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, therefore my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Here ends um, the verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. Thank you. Reverend Colum, other members of the clergy, members of the bereaved family, friends, well wishers, well wishers. The second reading comes to you from the new, the new international version of the Old Bible, 2011, according to Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through to 18. It reads thus, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and we believe that God will bring Jesus, God will bring Jesus to those who have fallen asleep in him. According to God's words, we, um, it, it, it tells us that we were left mourning, but managed to live a life in Christ, will come to see their Lord. They will not perceive not only those who have gone on before, but those who they will meet in another life. For the Lord himself, will come down from the heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet called from God, and death in Christ shall rise forth. After that, 
we who are still alive and are left to be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, shall live forever. And so we will be with the Lord forever as well. And it's the 18th verse, um, climax is the, the chapter by saying, therefore, but, uh, brethren, we must encourage each other with these holy words to live together as part of God's family. This is words of the Lord. We continue with the program. At this time, we will be presented with a solo. The person who is to do the solo can come forward, followed by three tributes. The persons who are giving the tributes, I'd just like to remind you that you have at least two minutes for each tribute. Thank you. Why worry about tomorrow? Why worry when things go wrong? If your life has been sent for the Savior, you won't have much farther. Good afternoon, everyone. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm just um, representing um, Paradise Nursing Home. I have um, Nurse Wilson here, and I'm just singing a short little tribute in behalf of the family and friends that are here. I believe in faithfulness, and I hope you also believe in faithfulness. Thank you. I believe in faithfulness. I believe in giving up myself for someone there else. I believe in peace 
in love I believe in honesty and trust It's not enough For all that I believe Will never change the way it is Unless I believe That Jesus lives Where there is faith There is a peace likely just sleeping Hope and everlasting in He who is able to bear Every burden to heal Every hurt in our heart It is a wonderful, powerful place begins to fall and our civility grows weak he's only in Christ I believe that Jesus lives where there is faith there is a peace likely just sleeping hope and everlasting in he who is able to bear every Good morning or good afternoon, church. No, I, on behalf of my family, um, Sharon, which is my cousin, says so her cousin father. I just want to wish the family condolence, and I hope that God will continue to strengthen them. No, um, Pointer is somebody that we knew for a very, very long time. A very humble man, and he was very friendly. You know, when he was in the hospital, myself and my sister, we would visit visited him. I remember one day when we went there, he told us that he wanted two peas and rice. So I told my sister, and uh, she cooked the two peas and rice. And uh, I stopped at the supermarket, and I bought some foods. So when I went to the hospital and I took it to him, I said to him, you know, I said to him, I said, you know, I went to give him the foods first. And I, when I went to the hospital, he said to me, where is this two peas? <laughs> I said, yeah, man, the prince brought the stupids for you. And he said, give it to me. But I said, but have some foods first. You know? And he said, no, I will eat the stupids first. And, you know, we stood there and we talked for a little while. And he also showed me a nice pair of glasses he had on his face. And he told me, you know, it was his son who bought the glasses for him. And, you know, he just not seen well from the glasses. And we spoke for a little while in the hospital. And I prayed and I shared with him. So I just want to say that, you know, we are not here to stay forever. And we just hope the family just continue to keep courageous, keep strong, because God is here for all of us. Praise God. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know, um, family come first, right? Uh, family should be family, right? Um, 
out of the entire family, though, there were two powerful men, my daddy and um, Uncle Pointer. Well, first of all, is, I don't think, is, is it Pointer? We know him as, I, well, I know him as Pinter. Yeah, that, uh, is, we know if you preach up the thing, you understand me? It's Pinter, right? And um, Uncle Pinter was, was a very, very jovial man, powerful. You know, um, when he come from um, Kingston and come over the old house, you can hear him and talk fast. You know, the, the, no, no, the part of the jackfruit tree. No, 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 right now in the family because all of us know that we have one more run is here for another funeral tomorrow and you know and sometimes when you look at it death has a way of bringing us together you know and as a, as a family let us not allow death all the time to bring us to together you understand we just celebrate life celebrate all the little animosities going on around us with us get back connected because as we look at it life is very fragile and it is also very, 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 very short. I want to just give my love, especially to Sherry, you know, and publicly let you know that I really, I really love you. And we talk after, all right? I'm going to give you a little quick look of peace and everything, all right? There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No in the sky and no more tears to dim the eyes all will be peace forevermore on that happy golden shore what a day glorious day that will be my lord what a day that will be shall see when I look upon his face the one who saves me by his grace oh when he takes me by the hand and lead me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be Thanks for that, Bevin. Uh, afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being so patient even when there was the delay, and just thank you all for being here. Um, I said earlier, family is so important, and I, before I forget, just stay connected with your family, regardless what is happening, regardless, we all bump heads, your family is not unique. All of us bump heads, but stay connected, man, especially when they, people get older, you know, they lose a lot of connections, so family, should be there 
for them, irrespective of what is happening. And Pinta, you know, when Pinta was, I, people, I wonder why, what am I saying? When Pinta was younger, Pinta loved his jazz music, you know, and he loved, loved going out, this two red stripe beer in his hand, you know, and it kind of makes sense when I was asking question about him, some of the behaviors I saw when I met when I started working with Pinter. When I started working with Pinter, you know, I have no clue about duck work. And him just said, come work with me. And one of the things I respect with him up to this day, when he sent us on a job, he had faith in us, knowing that the job was gonna be done. He didn't question what we do, and he would just ask us, how oh, everything go? Work out, uh, 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 uh. as I say, he talk very fast when he wants. And he would just believe in what we say when Steve and I used to go do some work and Richie. And that's one of the things I admire with him. And also, he loves his food. And because of that, him cook every day. So we don't have to worry about lunch. <laughs> yeah, man. And when we say cook, I mean, no, look up hot. Yeah, it's like when you see up at the dead yard last night. At them cooking, the serious cooking, man. And he always have this spirit in him. He will, Pinter will be cursing you, and you laughing too when he's cursing you. You know, the way he brings it across, you end up laughing at yourself too. Because he is up front, he tell you as it is, very little filter, but tomorrow when he cook again, your food is there. He's not having you up. So let's celebrate his life and keep his memory. Thank you. Okay, thank you for those tributes. Um, is Tanaki Carr here? Yes, sir. She will now give us a poem. Good afternoon, everyone. Our lives goes on without you, but nothing is the same. We have to hide our heartache whenever someone speaks your name. Your memory is our keepsake with which we'll never part we will forever keep you in our heart. My mind knows that you are gone, but my heart will never accept it. I know you are at peace now, and a place that you are free. Thank you. Just before we take the set of tributes, the family has consented that we lift an offering in aid of the community service department of the church. So at this time, I'm going to invite you to sing with us the hymn, Sing the Wondrous Love of Jesus, as the deacons prepare themselves to lift an offering. i 
give God thanks for the offering. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you for everything that you have provided for us. Now as we take this offering, Lord, to use it to your cause, may it go to further your work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now we have reached thus far. We will take the second set of tributes. These are open tributes, so anyone who is interested to pay tribute to the late Cecil Carr, you can do so at this time. We'll have three such tributes. Three. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nurse Smith from the Paradise Nursing Home, and I am the one that takes Mr. Carr and numbers of visits to the hospital. And it was nice doing it. Sometimes you can get a little, what you say, loud speaking at times. But once you say, what must you say? Say please. He will come and say, please. And as you said, he loved he loves his food. He will step out of nurse little guidance and he say, you know the little chuck over there. I want to go and buy the chicken, the chicken. Don't buy no fried chicken. I make sure you put a little pork gravy upon it. And we said, alright, Mr. Cecil. And he came. But it was, you know, I spent the loss, would I said Saturday with him while I was letting him speak to his son. And I said, Mr. Cecil, you all right? He said, yes. And his son was on the phone and he said, I'm hanging on, I'm hanging on. But he's not here to hang on anymore because the Lord sees fit to take him out of his pain. And today we just want to say he live a long life. And today we just want to celebrate the life that he has spent with us. May his soul rest in peace. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Bevin, almost, Bevin make me almost cry now. Yes, I am Cecil Kerr. My father figured to put on Junior on it. But anyway, there's so much special things to talk about my father. And um, two of the late coming of him, so I'm going to try to make it short. But one special, special thing. I can never forget. When I came down here, when I'm about eight or maybe 10, I used to go to Snowden School, and every, every month I can expect my lunch money or my money to go to school and to um, take care of me every month. Even sometime when I'm passing the post office, um, those days was um, Telegram. There wasn't any Western Union. You understand me? So we used to call it the mail at the post office. Sometime I'm passing, and the lady at working in the post office, they'll say, hey, Mr. Kerr, there's something here for you. And when I heard, when I heard you call me, I know that is my money coming in. You understand? My father was a very, very special person to me in my life. I, will, I, I can't even talk my life story. I will never go hungry. I always have a lot of food. And it's one more special thing. He gave me a trade that I can be a man today. Yeah. Understand? Give me a trade. Yeah. Understand? So there's so much things. But even when Marlon was telling you, my brother, about some jobs, I have so much special things and jobs. When the first time I go to my father on a job, he leave me there. I don't know nothing about duck work. He just run it up that way, run it over there, and run it over there and gone. I said, what's this? My sec the, 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 the person that he was working with, um, was working with him, he don't even know nothing. You understand? So I have to there figure it out. So sometimes even when I'm, L, um, when I'm older now, that's why I said, that's why I, I know my job so well. Because from day one, I have to figure it out. You understand me? So, you know, there's, there's so much things. Sometimes he's a very strong man. 
sometimes some units we have to lift up and give up six, six of we on one side and he, he alone on the other side. You understand me? So he's a very strong man. So, you know, <laughs> even Kenny can know that, you know? So, you know, so here he passed. Bevin, it me almost cry, I tell you, for some things, you know, but I'm just trying to keep it, keep it strong. You understand me? And you are very special to me. I try my best to, you know, to take care of him. I do a lot of stuff, but, you know, we don't have to talk about those things. You understand me? So, you know, thanks again. Well, Steve, I take it that you do your special remembrance. Did you? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we have read thus far in the program where we hear about the life story of Mr. Carr. So I invite Kenneth now, his nephew, to come and present us the eulogy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. All right, so obviously everybody know me, I'm saying. Ken, his nephew, um, I'm here to read the eulogy. The sad part about these things is that a eulogy doesn't explain the life of a person. I'm saying it's, it's two minutes of, of talking, talking about a person, but it's not the life. You know what I mean? My uncle was a great man, a great man indeed. Um, they say death is not the opposite of life, it's a part of it. And we move on. We're resilient. You know, we move on, we do it. So, so Uncle Pointer, and I'm going to say Uncle Pointer, and it says Cecil Rainford Kerr here, but hey, I'm not going to even call him um, Bristol Kerr, you know what I'm saying? Because Steve don't even call him Cecil. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, Uncle Pointer obviously um, was born to um, Adina Kerr and Henry Kerr. You know what I'm saying? He lived with his common-law wife um, for greater than 50 years, Miss Winifred Rowe. Um, he was the father of um, four kids. Um, the four, Steve, obviously, we know, you know what I'm saying, with his wife, Carol Ann. Um, he had like Sherry and he had um, Yvette, who's deceased right now, um, and he had um, uh, Kino. You know what I'm saying he had um, two sisters. It says one here, but he had two sisters. I'm saying you know we know it. One was Elsie, she's older, um, and then on Joyce, who currently she's 90. You know what I'm saying so she's going on strong. And then he had four brothers. You have Uncle Doctor, he's in the house. You know I mean his name is Everton Kerr. You have my father, his name is Murray. Lloyd Kerr, um, you have Uncle Bunny from um, Canada, Samuel Kerr, and obviously he's got, you know, Charlie or Stanley Kerr, who was deceased like around six years ago. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we all know him. All right, then he also he had um, five grandkids. You know what I'm saying? He had five grandkids, obviously, um, Tanaka, Tanake, Roshan, Ray J, and um, Jaheem. He had great grandchildren, Emily, Jayla. And Amari, you had nephews, Kenneth Kerr, me. Uh, you had Ezra Kerr, you know what I'm saying? We know as Junior. We are Rowan. Where is he? We're Rowan there. Stand up, man. Stand up, what's here. So we know who we are. You know what I'm saying? We have, we have Tommy, Audley Kerr. Stand up, Tommy. Stand up. You know what I'm saying? We're here now. Um, you know, we don't have um, Ezra here. Um, you know, so. So, you know, we talk about eulogy. But I know back in the day, when we grew up, it was like five boys Tommy, Rowan, me. Junior and Steve, and then we had two girls. I'm saying, which is Sophia, um, and and um, and Jackie, and you know we we was hard to deal with. I mean, you got five boys running around. So Uncle Pointer was like a great disciplinarian. We used to play ball outside on the street, and we say, all right, we have a lookout. You look out for Uncle Pointer. Uncle Pointer is six foot five. I'm saying he's built like you know, like a like a basketball player. And we say, yo, you look out, and we'll play ball. So we're playing ball. We think, oh yeah, we're good. So sometimes they do that look out in my play. Next thing you know, Uncle Pond is on top of us with the whip. I was like, how the hell did he get here so fast? You know what I'm saying? You know, sorry, my, you know, sorry about you know, cursing. But you know what I'm saying? And then he's whip us, you know what I'm saying? And we're like, oh, yeah, whatever, you know what I'm saying? We go around. But you know, he made us stronger. I remember one um, time back in the 70s, I'm saying, Uncle Pinter, I migrated to Canada. I was like, oh, yeah, man, it's great. We're happy now. He's gone. You know what I'm saying? So it's like on Tuesday, he was gone. So we're like, oh man, we were playing in the street for the whole day. It was chilling out. So on Thursday, came home from school. It was primary school day. I was like, I heard a loud noise in the yard. I'm like, who, who could that be? 
Don't tell my uncle Brian to that. <laughs> what the hell did he come back for? You know, said, come on here now. He was back, back to terrorize us. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It was a serious thing, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, was it the next day? And now he came back Thursday. It was Tuesday and Thursday, I remember that. I can't forget that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, just to say that, you know what I'm saying? So, he was a disciplinarian. You know what I'm saying? We got disciplined. And listen, you know, you know, we, we embrace that discipline. You know what I'm saying? Because we, be, we become great men today. You know what I'm saying? It's because of my uncle. You know what I'm saying? We're disciplined. We have families. We've never been in trouble with the law. So, you know, I, I appreciate him for that. You know what I'm saying? I remember, too, I used to work at Uncle Pointer. And um, he used to give me a big box. I was like, how oh, come you give me so much money? You know what I'm saying? Right? I went to New York, and I worked with my uncle in Brooklyn for like one week, Uncle Charlie. He gave me less money than Uncle Pointer gave me in Jamaica. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you know what I'm saying? So, so you, know, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, just, it's just some, something, you know, some, something, some things like that, you know what I'm saying? He started the career at the age of 25, where he worked many years as a sheet metal man for um, the greater than 50 years. His first job was with Dage, air conditioning, where he protected his kids. And Dage, you know what I'm saying? You have a guy in your Dage at Ozzy. Ozzy know it, because Ozzy worked with them. So I'll show your hands, Ozzy, you know what I'm saying? Those are the people that, are, um, and Dragon, where's Dragon? I'm saying, I see Dragon last night, I didn't know it was him. I was like, is that Dragon? Oh, man, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, are you privileged skills and broadening his knowledge as a sheet metal duck installer for about 15 years. After that, he became an independent contractor and worked on many major projects until he, until he retired. So I guess during his retirement year, obviously, Oak Pointer, you know, you know, at some point, you know, we all become, you know, we're not immortals. I'm saying we become, you know, we're not invincible, so you get sick and all that sort of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But he worked at major box sites, plants, Alport, Alcan, Kirkvine, um, flour mill. Where's the flour mill? I don't even know where that is. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Flour mill. Um, yeah. Major hotels and commercial buildings and private homes throughout Jamaica. In the later years, due to multiple illness, my brother could not perform some of the great work he used to do when he was a younger man. He was placed in an assisted living facility called Paradise Home in Old Harbor by his son, Steve. He was under the care of uh, Sonia Wilson. Is she in the house? Oh, no? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, uh, tribute to her, you know what I'm saying, for taking care of my uncle. Up until his death, you know what I'm saying? His children and grandchildren would, would visit him from, from there periodically during his stay. In the end, even though he was he appeared outwardly of strong stature with becoming voice, he was unable to cope with the recent death of his daughter, uh, who just recently died. Uh, I want to say a month ago. You know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, which is like a sad thing. I think that probably helped my uncle on his way. You know what I'm saying, because you know he just couldn't handle it. Um, about three, we met about three weeks ago. For his death, combined with the, the failure of his physical body, to fend off the many illnesses that eventually led him to his death. Uncle Patty, we miss dearly. You have always been a great, uh, a great provider, disciplinarian, and protector for your family. May you rest in eternal peace. May we all remember Revelation 22-4. Any God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither of all these more pain for the form of things are passed away. You know, the funny thing about it, right, is that I remember when my other uncle passed away, and we were actually coming from Atlanta, me and Steve. And I'm saying we got the call, Uncle, Pi um, Uncle Charlie drop out. And the funny thing, Steve at my house about October 9th. I will get the call, you know what I'm saying? I won't say, yo, Steve say, yo, I'm not the caller. The caller on the good. Funny thing about it again, Uncle Pinter, you know what I'm saying? Gone. And I mean, you know, we, we as um, people, like him said, Bevan said, we have animosity with each other, each family. I said this, that, and this, is something about that thing. But, yo, know, when, when, when it works out, what is, what is it all about? You know what I'm saying? What is it all about? We just got to live good. You know what I'm saying? We got to. Throw away the animosity, because today you're here and tomorrow you're gone. You know what I'm saying? So just to say that, you know what I'm saying? The, the great um, Roman general, he said, he said, row young man and live. Row well. On October 9th, 2022, 
Uncle Pinter could not row anymore, so he went up to see his maker. Rest in peace, Uncle Pinter. We have reached thus far in our program. We will be hearing a word from the Lord. And to present us with a message from God is our dear pastor, Pastor E. George McCollum, who is a pastor for the District of Churches here, Heatfield, Nogpatrick, and Inverness, three churches he pastors. Pastor McCollum is a man of God. Always have sobering messages for times like these. And today is no exception. So I'm just going to invite you to sit, listen, as he should come forward to present to you a message for this hour. But before he comes forward, Jared Law will come forward and do the song of meditation. The next voice that you will hear is that of Pastor A.J. McCullough. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good afternoon.
Well done, Jared. Yeah. It's a song of hope. Brother Steve and family, there is hope. And um, you have great singers in the family. I, I don't know if he has records out already, but that was well done. Don't you believe so? Yeah. Marvelous. You do. I figured. I figured. Huh? Sounds like an artist. Eldon? You have great songs, and I, we hope to sing those songs in the earth made new. They're going to be somewhat revised. Huh? And interestingly, there's going to be a special song. I'm taking time out to tell you this. Uh, and the Bible says, um, we who will be redeemed from this earth hmm, are victorious over sin. Follow my words. Victorious over sin. When we get to heaven, you know that angels can sing, right? You know that. Angels can sing. As we speak, angels can sing better than human beings. Oh, yeah. Because they have not sinned. And that's the ones who have not sinned. But it is said that when we get there and start to sing the song of redemption, they're going to fold their wings because they've never, ever heard so sweet songs, the meaning they cannot um, associate with. And it is against that background that I want to share hope. Is that okay? Hope with you. Now, I hope you have the capacity to accept the hope. And by this, I mean, I hope that you are also looking forward to life after death. Hello? Because if you're not looking towards or for life after death, hope has no meaning to you. Amen? Yes. And I want you to get that. So, so here you are in 1 Corinthians, it says, if it is only in this life, we have hope. Even if the hope is in Christ, you're still miserable. Do you understand that? No, that's a serious thing. And I, I want you to know that I'm not going to be very long. Is that, is that any hope? <laughs> I'm not going to be very, very long. Serious, sincere condolences to you. I noticed that um, Pinter um, lives, what, is it 82 or so? That's a long enough time. But enough for who? Even if he has lived 180, you'd still be crying. There's something about death, we just can't embrace it. But thank God for hope in Jesus Christ. I'm going to share a passage or two with you, and then we will get out and do hope and pray that one, you will be somewhat comforted, and two, we will recognize or at least appreciate more that this is not all to life. I believe that, and I encourage you to believe so. After this life, after we sleep, if we should, there is a life thereafter. And I look forward to that. The heads above. Father, thank you for reminding us. And thank you for the life of Cecil. Thank you for the many whom he would have impacted throughout his 82 years. And thank you for the rippling effect, uh, effects that this will have throughout his children, his grandchildren, nephews, other relatives. And they, they too will pass on this legacy of love among themselves to begin with and to others. May as we listen to your words today, we will weep, but not as some who have no hope. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. I consider the passage in Ecclesiastic very appropriate, especially when... I heard of the younger life or style. And by the way, um, Brother Steve, uh, you have met other brothers, right? Uh, and did you, by the way, you had a party last night? What was the wake? It was, I didn't know you could have invited me, I would come. 
and it speaks volume to a hey, listen we celebrating his life there's not very many children who like the lord's prayer our father because their father was of no good to them but when you can testify um brother steve and by extension grandchildren of the love of your father it speaks volume uh, we know that when you come to funeral you don't say the bad things hello hello yes. don't ever because what you don't know is if that person would have made it right with god just before God is more interested in the good things, and I don't know your family, but when my family members die, and they're dying off, by the way, you see I have another funeral next week? Tomorrow. My heart goes out for you. And there's one thing I learned, is that God give it, and he take it. Amen? And up to the last moment, he decides which way our life will go. Amen? Up to the last, there's, it is said that there's going to be surprises in heaven. And one of them, those that you think would be there will not be there. And those you think not will be there. It's something about heaven and God that is between us and him. Isn't that so? And so I'm encouraged to share in the book of Ecclesiastes. He said, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come, it, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And I'm speaking to you as one who have the privilege of still walking on the earth. Because there are so many lying, if not rotten, under the earth. Is that making sense? And we should not take life lightly when we have it or when we are young and everything seems to be fancy and dandy and okay. That's what Solomon is saying. By the way, the wise man Solomon, when he speaks, we should listen. He said we should be aware when we can see the sun or the light or the moon because there's going to come a time when we can't see it properly, even though it may be burning. Right now, I don't know for Sister Ina, if, you take, if she takes off her glasses, if she can read, that's good for her. But if I take off mine, I can't read this very thing. I, I, and there are some of you who may say, what? I have my good sight, man. I'm young, just 25, 30, 15, as the case may be. But Solomon is saying it's not always going to be like that. And therefore, you are to remember your creator, not just when you're young, but as long as you're alive. He didn't say remember the money in the bank. Remember your fame and popularity. He said remember your creator. In the days of your youth, because there's going to come a time. Interestingly, since the time has passed, 82 years, he would have gotten a lot of years to repent, to live godly and repent. And if there's one thing I want to point out that he has done for you, he has done for you, is that today as his body lies here, he reminds, he reminds you that death is real. If you think that this is not real, and if you have the stomach, if you have the will to watch this body rot, if you can take the stench, if you think he's gone anywhere, and if you can take the stench, just watch, it goes right back to the dust. Death is real. So Solomon went on to say, you ought to be careful of those days while you are still alive and have a chance to worship your creator. Because over then shall the dust return, verse 7, to the earth as it was. Those of us who remember creation story. Death is just is actually a reverse of creation. And he laid down blue. I could I could refer to this setting as walking dust. Walk. We are just it's just because the breath of life is in us where we are moving. And when that is gone, the Bible says, 
it returned as it was to the earth, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. But what is very interesting, Solomon ends the passage by saying, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. So in all that you are doing, I don't know what you're engaged in. I don't know your business. I don't know your life or lifestyle. But I'm here to remind you of the word of God, regardless of how happy you are, regardless of how sad, regardless of what is happening. He said, fear God and keep his commandments because this is the whole duty of man. And as if that is not enough, he said, because God shall bring every work into, justice, into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now follow this. I'm coming to the end. Coming to the end. In fact, I'm closer to the end than when I began. So that's all right. That, that, that's all right. But I want you to get this. And there are some who says that there's no God. But the Bible says the fool said in his heart that there's no God. There are some who said I can live and do whatever I want because when I die, that just it. I'm here to tell you that's not true. Whatever or these are, the Solomon said, for God shall bring every work into judgment. Another passage says, we all have sinned and come short. Therefore, we have some sinful work that will come up. But you know, Elder, I always said to myself, I beg God, don't let my sins come up. My sins are too many. I don't know about you. Maybe you're pure. Maybe you are sinless. Maybe I don't want my sins to come up. Because if my sins should come up on the day of judgment... Without any advocate, woe unto me. So the Bible says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. But I have a good word for you today. As I get closer to the end, it says here in Revelation chapter 21, John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first passed away. And what is beautiful about it is that those of us who accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, we will not have to stand up in the day of judgment and face our sin. Wow. Let me, any lawyer in the house? Is there any attorney at law here? Not yet? Yes? But maybe, yeah. Jesus Christ will be your lawyer. And for all the sins that I have committed, if I had given it to him, I don't know if you have any, any case, but I have a case one sister, the lawyer said, tell me the truth and I will do the rest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when Jesus said, give me your sins and I will wash you and cleanse you. And on the day of judgment, when Satan, who is not responsible for your sins, by the way, because those of us who repent, we, have, we are not responsible for it anymore. In fact, those will be on the shoulder of Satan. So when Satan thinks his shoulder is going to be light because your sins are going to come off, Jesus is going to say, I forgive that one. Yes. I forgive him. I forgive her. I forgive Cecil. And my blood is rich and powerful enough to forgive. And so on the day of judgment, which will come, by the way, we don't know when that will be. In fact, the very next moment that Cecil will see is the day of judgment. And when the resurrection, it will be just like the twinkling of an eye that he was. And I hope and pray that Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, will be able to stand up for him. But I can't speak to him. Maybe 10 or 15 years ago, if I had a chance, I would. But I can speak to you. And as I come to a close, Revelation says, it is done. I'm Alpha and Omega. But before that, he said, he shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. I heard a nurse talk about 
I had a pain in my shoulder. It's increasing over one year now. I went to the doctor. He said, get an x-ray. The x-ray don't show anything. God forbid. Some of you are in serious pain here. But thanks be to God, my Bible tells me there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, because the former things are passed away. But I quickly said to you, this promise is reserved for those who accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. May I end where I began. Examine your life. How am I living? If my remains was in this casket today, would I be ready for the first resurrection? We have hope in Jesus Christ. We who are here, we can say, Lord, my days in the past has not been what it ought to be. And maybe I can't even change it suddenly. But give me the grace. Give me your help so that I can change my life into what it ought to be. And I tell you, the God that I serve will do it for you. It is my hope and prayer that when he shall come, or if you should pass like Cecil Pinter, you will be in the first resurrection. I say to his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, relatives and friends, God has a plan for you. Amen? God has a plan for you, and if Cecil make it to the kingdom, don't disappoint him. Make sure you are there to meet him as a brother, as a friend, and we all will live with God forevermore for eternity. What is your plan for this life? Is it equivalent to the plan that God has for you? And that is to meet him in the earth made new. May God help us all. That as we move throughout this funeral service, we will be reminded that this is not all. But there's going to be a getting up morning. Yes. And I hope and pray that we all will be with our Lord Amen. and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. This is at this time that I ask the congregation to stand, except for the family members. We're going to be praying for a special prayer for the family members. So we ask the friends and will wishes to stand, and I'm getting the impression that more will be sitting than those standing, very good. So we ask you to bow your heads as you pray this special prayer for the bereaved family, loving Father who art in heaven. Today we are very much cognizant of the reality of death. And there are so many schools of thoughts so to confuse us as to whether or not we will return to life. But I believe the word of God. And you remind us today that we are to so live because everything will come back at some point in time, be it good. We know we have some evil among us, but we pray, Father, that we have some evil within us. But we pray that we will submit these to you and the, the, the good will override the evil because we all have sinned and come short of your glory. And if we should pass before you come, we pray, Lord, that because we submit ourselves to you and even the bereaved family now, we pray, Father, that you will give them hope in Jesus. A relative 82 years seems as if it's a long time, but... There's a hole left in the heart. There's a space that cannot be filled. And the many years to come, if this earth should last, it will be just like yesterday that we have our father, our uncle, our brother. And so we pray, Father, that you will comfort them through your Holy Spirit. We pray that you will hug each one close to you and that the, 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 the power of your Holy Spirit will, they will feel such and the comfort and the joy and knowing uh, that this is not all. There is a better place for us. We thank you for comforting them. And we pray, Father, that they will use occasions like these, as was mentioned before, to draw closer and closer to each other, even though none can fill the gap of this beloved. We pray even now that they will look to you, above all, for the joy and comfort in the midst of the tears in the midst of the sorrow, comfort your people, we ask of you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
We are going to proceed into the into the closing um, segment, and we are going to ask Son Steve to come forward and to make a note of thanks or acknowledgement to you before we get into the recession. Thank you. Yes. Thanks again, thanks again. First, I must give thanks, give thanks, give thanks to each and everyone today that attended, even one who don't, who are overseas, who come from far and near. We have some friends come even from Portland, you know, some from all over Jamaica and abroad. So we're just gonna give thanks and just give thanks to each and everyone. Thank you. We have come to the end of a beautiful service. And now I will just share with you some instructions as to the way we will proceed to the graveside. During the singing of the hymn, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. When we get to the third stanza, I think, just let me double check, the second stanza, the platform party will file out first, followed by the pallbearers bearing the casket, then the immediate family follow the casket, then the congregation. The pastor's car will lead the procession to the graveside, followed by the hearse. And I'm going to ask of you to cooperate as much as possible so that we don't have any bungling or any holding up of traffic as we leave from here to the graveside. I now invite you to stand as we sing the hymn, My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He's trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. Just before we begin, will the pallbearers please take up your position, please? Is everyone here? Steve, Ron, Oswald McFarlane, Rasheen Thomas, Marlon Henry, and Ralston Reed.
was labor for the master from the dawn to set air. When the road is full of blunders, 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 Casket piece was out of the screen. Thank you. Shall sound and the deadly crash arise. No 
laughing and shout and dance about when we get over yonder. We're going to ask for your attention as we get to the end. We ask for a moment of silence while the family members lay the wreaths, after which we will have the closing prayer. We can proceed as soon as the mason is all right. Can we can we have a moment of silence? As the family members proceed to lay the wreath. Thank you. Thank you very much. As we prepare for benediction, permit me to read for you the acknowledgement from the family. Uh, the family of Cecil Pointer, Cecil Pointer Carr, would like to express sincere uh, gratitude for your tributes, messages, prayers, calls, visits, and words of comfort. For these, we say thanks. This is where Brother Cecil Kerr takes his exit. Normally when we are riding on the bus, you hear when one reaches their stop, they say, one stop drive. And we don't know who will say, the next stop. But there are going to be more stops. And I pray that evidently we will take this as a reminder, if not a warning, that one of these days it will be our stop. And in so doing, we will make our calling an election show. Please bow your heads with me for the benediction. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God our Father, the sweet Holy Spirit, our Comforter, rest, reign, and abide with us now as angels mark this spot, and do according to thy divine will, O God, that your resurrection we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everyone. We have a good evening. Thank